You hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this channel ad free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and today we have some things to show you from Endless Pens. These are spooky season Halloween-y type things that were sent out for of you and for me to share with you and show you. So I actually have an ink, uh, I have a pair of pens, and also we're going to do a giveaway. So check for details on the giveaway below and, uh, you know, keep watching. Let's take a look at some of these cool pens. All right, first up, we have a pair of pens from Endless Pens. These are both Opus 88 mini pocket pens, and they're both part of the Hatch Collection, which is a project which will connect artists and makers with sticker sets and washi tape and fountain pens, let them put their designs out there. These are some pretty darn cool little things. I've got a cart full of washi tape and uh, things at the moment. So, you know, check them out over at Endless Pens. Link down in the description. And also, I will link to... Um, the um, the video from Attila Slutus, uh, which talks about this Halloween pen. So we'll take a look at that in just a sec. In fact, let's open this one up first. Uh, we have two here. This one is the uh, Hatch sp Halloween Spooks. In, in each of these boxes, you will have uh, a little instruction booklet here on how to fill these. These are both eyedropper pens, which are a very easy pen to fill and to use. And I've had no problems with the eyedropper pens that I've used from Opus 88. In fact, I'm always a little surprised by how good these things are. So in each of these, you will find uh, a pen, you'll find an eyedropper to fill that pen, and a little O-ring uh, in case you lose your original so you can replace it. So that's pretty handy. Here is the Halloween Spooks pen. This is one of those Opus 88 mini pockets. We have uh, all kinds of fun illustrations up here, and you can get this on a washi tape too. Now, in the pictures online that I've seen of this, it is a it is a darker orange. This is definitely a more pale orange, kind of like a very pale pumpkiny orange, and not the uh, like sort of darker orange that I've seen online. That's probably just a lighting thing. But this is a very nice looking pen. You got your very fun ghost. That's my favorite illustration. Uh, also, a skull with a hat, a potion, a bunch of bats, an even more different potion with a fountain pen. I don't know, dipping into it or stirring it or casting I don't know, spells. I don't know, man. You know, this tiny cat here, a jack-o'-lantern and a slightly larger version of that cat there. I think the cat, the small cat is my wife's favorite. Uh, and my favorite is this ghost. Actually, after I got this, my wife, Audrey, was like, oh, that's the one I was going to get. So it's kind of perfect. So thank you very much, Endless. Uh, these come in a variety of nibs. These are a number five Yovo nib size, and they come in all the standard sorts of sizes, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and uh, a pretty large stub at 1.4 millimeters is what I'm seeing here on the interwebs. And these will be 79 bucks a piece. Probably minus any uh, of the discounts that you can get over there at Endless Pens for various reasons, including um, uh, like memberships and all kinds of things. Uh, I also do have a uh, sponsor link down below, uh, an affiliate link if you would like to uh, throw a little kickback to me whenever you buy stuff at Endless Pens. That will be down there in the description as well. This is the other pen. This one was done with Micah Fines, who you can find on Instagram as at Micah Fines. I'll have a link in the description, and also it'll be over here, of course, on the screen. This one is called Illusions, and it is really neat looking. I've been using this one for a little while for, uh, for a little while with the ink that I'm going to show you here today. It's just like a very fun sort of like night moonscape here. Beware the illusions. Things are not as they appear. It's really, uh, it's really pretty fun. I, I dig it. Uncapping this thusly. There you go, you can see what's going on here. Uh, these are a fairly short pen. They are a pocket pen. We're gonna compare them to a whole bunch of other pens here in a sec. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this one, show you how that works, and we'll look at uh, this ink that I've got in here, which, uh, as you can see, is a very dark ink. Uh, very black caddy. Now inside these you'll see as a Japanese eyedropper they do have this little stopper. And so when you have the finial here, uh, which I can, there we go. When you have that screwed all the way down, it seals off the section so you can't get any leaks or what have you. But if you forget to ever open this up, you will run out of ink in here and it will just kind of like stop flowing. You're like, I can totally see ink in here. Why isn't it working? Well, because you've got it closed off. So don't forget to open up the back of your pen occasionally. I generally just kind of will leave it cracked. It doesn't have to be cracked very open, uh, cracked open very far rather but uh, that will keep the ink flowing. You can also post these pens. They post on the back of that little ring pretty securely. It's not going to come off. It does rattle a little bit because uh, I have that, uh, that end extended, but it's not going to hurt it. It's already screwed down or whatever. 
and it does rotate just a little bit. So that can be a little bit of a pain. I don't love the way the, the rotating cap feels. I kind of wish it was sturdier uh, sort of in my hand that way. But I, I also can just write with this without posting it. Now, I'm not going to want to write a novel with this without posting it. It is kind of short, but I have very large hands. Uh, when my wife holds this pen, it is... It's larger in her hand than it is mine, if you know what I'm saying, because uh, her hand is smaller. So if you have smaller than my giant mitts, this will be a perfectly good sized pen for just writing with. And indeed, I've been writing with this one a fair amount lately with uh, no problems at all. So let's go ahead and fill this up with an ink uh, just because I want to use that ink and uh, I haven't I haven't done it yet. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So I'm going to fill this one up with Wuthering Heights. This is an Endless Pens exclusive from last year uh, with uh, Waring Ghoul, Emily Brooks. Bronte's Wuthering Heights, which I have in another pen, and that pen has a pretty fine nib, and I've kind of been wanting to have a bigger nib for this, because this is sort of a moody teal, and it's got this beautiful uh, shimmery silver in there, and uh, so I kind of want some more of that. So here's how you are going to fill these pens. I like to use uh, something that I, you know, use for... Um, <laughs> for my ink samples just to sort of stabilize it while I'm doing this especially since I have cats who may just jump on the table at any time so I just kind of set it in there like that give your ink a bit of a swirl I'm trying to get this shimmer up in the ink actually that that mixed in very easily you don't want to shake the inks too hard because if you do you'll get a lot of air bubbles up at the top and that's just that's just a pain so you'll take your eyedropper and suck up some ink there you can do this from a, a sample vial just as easily as you can uh, one of these, and I like to sort of put it against the little stopper in there and just kind of squeeze gently. And that will put the ink in there. We're going to need more than that. These pens hold a fair amount of ink. That's two eyedroppers. I'm not getting a whole lot of ink in this eyedropper, actually. I wish I was getting a little bit more. There we go. That's pretty good. We're getting up there. I like to give them a pretty full fill. There we go. All right. Uh, squeeze the rest of that back in there and I'll just set this aside somewhere where it won't get ink too on too many things and then we will just put the section back on here in fact I'm actually just going to dab the inside here I got a little bit on the inside where the threads are and I like to just dab it off of there it's very easy I just take a little it's just a paper towel it's nothing fancy just take a paper towel touch those uh those threads there and you'll get the ink off there no problem now you can also put uh you can see that's where the o-ring goes it's right there at the bottom so you can put that another o-ring on there if you happen to lose that one while you're cleaning or if it breaks or something like that there we go just screw it on there and uh, you can see the ink is in there and it is ready to go now since this <laughs> hasn't been filled through the nib it might take a little bit of time to get this to the nib so i'm just going to set this aside i'll just sort of set it point down and let it uh, let the ink work its way to the nib as it goes but look how pretty that is once you have some ink in there i really like the the look of demonstrator pens and eyedropper pens now, one thing about eyedropper pens that usually, or at least I should say sometimes will keep me from using an eyedropper is that sometimes if you have a hot hand, you can get these to burp, which means sometimes when this is uh, this is unscrewed and you're just holding your hand for a long time or it's a hot day, your hand will heat up the ink chamber here enough to make the air in there expand and it will push ink out of your nib and you'll get like a little bloop on your page. I got to say, I haven't had that happen with these pens. I sort of think maybe the wall here and you can't really see it at all when, on the pen, but... I think the wall might be thick enough to stop that from happening, but I haven't had it happen with any of my Opus pens, so that's pretty good. That's a that's real nice. All right, let me put this one away. And then to clean this out, of course, uh, you can just pull the stopper off the back, and I'll just pull the stopper off, and I'll just run water straight through there. That's the easiest way I've found to do it, and I just kind of set it aside to dry, and it'll be clean and dry in no time. It's very easy to clean these little eyedroppers. Actually, look at that. You can see some of the shimmer and stuff in the eyedropper. That's neat, too. This is, uh, this is a cool ink, this Wuthering Heights. Let's take a look at another really cool ink. Okay, so here we have some small and pockety sort of pens here uh, next to our Opus 88 mini pocket pen. I do have the base unscrewed just a little bit, but that's not really adding much at all to the height of this thing. Here we have a Shown Design Pocket 6, a Shown Design Smultem pen in Black Ultim. This is a Spoke Design Axel S. Then we have here a, um, this is a Galen Leather Edition Kaveco Sport. And then over here, 
a Sailor Pro Gear uh, Slim. I almost said short, but slim. And it's just a little bit longer than the Opus 88 Mini Pocket Pen. So for pocket pens, this is a fairly large pen compared to uh, these other ones over here. Let's take off some caps and do some posting because that is a lot of the time how we will be using these pens here. Okay, there we go. So this is what these look like with their caps posted. And as you can see, when the caps are posted, these two are pretty much exactly the same length with the Sailor Pro Gear Slim here and the Opus 88 Slim or a pocket mini mini pocket pen. So many words in that one. Then we have the Kaveco Sport, the Smoltem, the Pocket 6, and the Spoke Axle S being the smallest of these when it is posted. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty nice large pocket pen size, I would say. And I think you can totally use it without that cap posted. Although if you're a person who loves to post the cap because you don't want to lose it while you're pocket penning, this is uh, really nice. You can actually post these pens. I have read on the Endless Pen site that the older pocket mini pens don't actually post, but the newer version does. So that's uh, that's a that's a thing to look out for. All right, folks. So this is Waringal's The Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe. This is another Ed Endless Pens exclusive. It's another glistening ink, and uh, this is available now. It's a pretty recent adoption in the line, and uh, I gave away a bottle of this as part of my 10,000 subscriber giveaway. So one of y'all won one of these already. But guess what? Uh, they sent me another one. So I actually have a second one to give away. Uh, check the form down there in the description. Sign up for that this week, and I will... Um, I'll, uh, I'll send this out to a lucky winner and that'll be real fun. So that'll be a little happy fountain pen day for somebody out there and also maybe a little happy Halloween. So let's take a look at what Black Cat uh, looks like. We'll take a look at it in the bottle and we'll look at kind of a typical sort of ink review situation I've got going on here with the Black Cat. All right, so this is the bottle. This is a 30 mil glass bottle. You can see there is the shimmer down there. This is sort of like a red copper sort of uh, sort of sort of shimmer. That's what I'm going to call it. It's sort of a reddish coppery color. It's a really neat color there. And this is actually a pretty deceptive ink as well in terms of what color it actually is because it looks black and it's got black in the name, but it's not quite a black as we'll see very soon. All right, here we have Wearing Ghoul Endless Pens, Edgar Allan Poe, The Black Cat. You can see that I wrote this stuff out here with my Illusions Opus 88 mini pocket pen here with a broad nib. In fact, all these that I have from them are broad nibs. They're really great for shimmer and all that kind of thing. So I, I like broad nibs a whole lot. Plus, you can get them ground if you uh, like a bit more uh, fancy writing stuff from your pens. And as you can see here, it's not quite a black. In fact, it's sort of a very dark violet, but most of the time it's going to look black or kind of a light black, maybe a very dark gray. As you can see sometimes down here in the text, it does take on, like as it says right here in violet, you have a bit of that dark gray character, which is pretty neat. Right there. Yeah, it looks real nice, actually. Uh, I like a dark gray. I like a light black sometimes. Also like a super dark black. I like a lot of those kinds of colors. So uh, as far as flow, a solid medium. I haven't had any problems with this binding up in the nib or anything like that. Sometimes you will have that with shimmer inks. Uh, I haven't had any problem with that at all in this pen uh, that I can remember. It's pretty darn good. Uh, flow, very solid medium performance. Mild bleed on the 20 pound paper. So this is my 20 pound, 30% recycled copy paper. And you can see no real feathers on there. It's looking pretty good. If I'm very, very picky, I might say there's like a tiny feather in the P there or down here, maybe on this B. That actually kind of looks like a place where I put my thumb down or something like that. So I don't know. I think it works pretty well on there and a little bit of bleed on the back, but honestly, no worse than anything else on here and better than some. So that's from a broad nib. It's doing very well. This is uh, this is quite nice. This black cat. All right. Uh, so as I say, there are 30 mil bottles, $22, but uh, Endless Pens, of course, sent these out for me to test and show off. So uh, there you go. Let's go ahead and do a little water drop test. Take a look at some chromatography. All right, let's go. Whoa. <laughs> uh, don't squeeze the bottle and take the cork off the top at the same time or else you will make a mess. Actually, we need a little bit more water, a little bit more water. Let's let's get some more up here. Yeah, that's better. That's better. This paper can handle all that water. This is Nebula Casual Note paper, and it is very nice. I'm a big fan of this Nebula Casual Note. A little, a little swish. Yeah, pretty good. You can see uh, actually some violet coming up there in that water drop. 
and uh, there's definitely gonna be some left but we're losing some of the violet off the top that's interesting there we go blot 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 uh yep some violet came off there we got a little bit of a grapey color here and also a mr nose fur right there mr nose my cat he had to be on the desk here all right, so yeah, not waterproof. Uh, this cat doesn't love water, but it can deal with it. Here is the chromatography, and as you can see, lots of blackish or grayish colored left down here. Some of it moved up, and then just as we had in our water drop test, uh, the violet came off the top. That's really, that's an interesting result. It, it's interesting how that works. I, I always think that's cool when you have an entirely different color come off the top of the ink like that. But plenty left over. If you spill your water on your page, you will definitely be able to recover your work. No problems at all. Oh, and I do have uh, I do have a writing sample here. This is Marmon Crokey paper, which is a sketch paper. It's a very nice uh, white paper. It's quite thin. No uh, bleed through or anything like that. This is great paper. Grab some if you can find it. But you can definitely see some of that gray character on this one. This uh, paper does not really soak up ink very well. It's uh, I mean, it's very good for fountain pens. And sometimes with papers like this and Tomoe River and the like, you will have uh, this um, it's kind of interesting effect where you can see like the ink will sort of pool at the bottoms of, lever of letters. So like here in this on, you can see I start here and go around with the ink pooled down here because it's just not soaking into the paper. It's kind of like kind of sloshing around on the paper, which is fun. And uh, yeah, I think this is good looking ink. It's good looking ink. It's got f plenty of shimmer, but it's not really in your face with the shimmer. Put some light on it. We'll definitely see some some shiny bits here and there. Yeah, you can totally see it there, especially in the middle of the page. A little bit hard to find with my diffuse lighting that I use for these. Actually, look up there at visibility aids. That's kind of perfect up there. That's what you get when you uh, when you're showing the uh, the light on this at, at an angle. So yeah, pretty nice, but uh, also kind of subtle. So that's fun. I like a black ink with a subtle shimmer. That's always fun to, for me. So there you go. It's um yeah, it's it's Mormon uh, croaky paper with this uh, black cat. Looks good, I think. All right, folks. Thanks very much for watching. I've really been enjoying these little Opus 88 pocket pens, and I love the way that they're incorporating the illustrations from artists and that sort of thing in the Hatch collection. Go check out that video below which will take you to the endless pens youtube channel check them out also of course on the other social medias and that sort of jazz look up micah fines and um attila salutis because they are doing cool art stuff with fountain pens and whatnot over on their social medias which i will also put below and hey check out that affiliate link down there if you would like to uh support the channel a little bit with your endless pens purchase and until next time um you know peace out